the first item on the work session is discussion on the peninsula plan update. After that, uh, the discussion on the clerk treasurer white paper that was presented to council last week. Um, in regards to the discussion on the peninsula plan update, you were provided uh, several pieces of information uh, on the work session packet, which was available to the public on the city website and Facebook page. Um, some of the information that was included uh, would have been some information from um, a letter from the Manistee Manufacturing Council, their perspective, you would have all received that. A letter from uh, Reef Riley Stash American Materials, they also submitted a letter for your information. Uh, a memo from the city engineer regarding the increase of truck traffic and such. Um, in addition to that, you also received a, uh, a letter, uh, an attorney opinion from Attorney George Taylor. He's here tonight. If you have any specific questions you would like to have him address, uh, we've also I've also asked Miss Kathy Morin of the Alliance for Economic Success. I believe I saw Kathy. Mm -hmm. I did. Perfect. Uh, to be here this evening, in case you had any specific questions about the uh, the positions themselves, we all recognize the importance of jobs. Independent of where those jobs are located, we want to ensure that that uh, we do everything we can as the City of Manistee and the Alliance for Economic Success to ensure that economic opportunities are are researched and gone after, um, even if it's not on any one particular piece of property. So, all of that information is available to you uh, tonight. Um, we, we've discussed this matter on several occasions. Um, uh, City Attorney George Saylor and I have talked about the fact that seeing how this is a work session, we really can't uh, and should not ask for you know formal council opinions on where you're at on this. This isn't the point of a work session discussion. Um, this has been an issue which I believe is important for council to to formally discuss as well as make a formal decision on how we move forward. Uh, so one of the thoughts that George and I have been discussing is the fact that uh, independent of where Council's at tonight in the work session discussion, which we'll commence after a few minutes, we thought it would be appropriate to have this on a Council agenda to get a formal declaration of City Council as to which direction. Do you want staff to work on committing the development agreement, or do we believe the development agreement uh, is where it should be and stands? Uh, I think that's important. Um, for the community and for council to take some formal action on that. So that's kind of where we are leaning on putting that on the council agenda. George has drafted some tentative language. Would you just kind of read that, George, before they get started? And, and maybe as a sort of introductory to all of this, um, uh, I've had uh, conversations with uh, attorneys for uh, an attorney for Mr. Sang and also uh, an attorney general counsel for Reith Riley. Um, I don't think it would be a surprise to counsel that they uh, don't share the same opinion about uh, the amendment of the development agreement. Um, uh, counsel for uh, Reith Riley believes that uh, Reith Riley should be able to be part of or, or be required to be part of any uh, approval for an amendment to the development agreement. Um, I've laid out uh, some of my opinion with regard to that uh, for counsel uh, in the materials that were presented. Um, but it, the, what's been expressed by Reith Riley, you know, is, is something that we, and I, and I certainly take seriously, and the council will need to take seriously. Um, and so one thought that uh, the city manager and I have discussed is that if at the next city council meeting, a motion were presented for vote, uh, that essentially would indicate that um, the city manager and city attorney were directed to uh, negotiate the terms of, amend uh, of an amendment to the development agreement. Uh, that motion then could be voted upon by council. If council does not approve uh, that motion, then we know where you stand and, and the question of whether or not Reith Riley uh, is entitled to uh, participate in or, or have um, a say in the amendment of the development agreement would be a moot point because uh, council would not be proceeding with an amendment. If council would pass a motion along those lines, uh, and the city manager and I would then begin discussions with Mr. Uh, Sang with regard to amendment of the development agreement that would also give the opportunity for Reith Riley, if it chose, 
to pursue whatever remedies it may have in court. Um, uh, I've expressed to uh, counsel the idea of a third party beneficiary under a contract. The third party beneficiary is a, a, an entity that is not a direct party to the agreement, but may have rights as though they were a direct party to the agreement. Uh, whether or not um, we, Riley can, um, whether their status rises to that or not, uh, I think it, it is to be seen, but if we follow the procedure I've, I've outlined in council's direction at the council meeting next week was to proceed with a um, negotiation for <coughs> amendment of the uh, development agreement and we give the opportunity for Reith Riley to address that if they chose to again in, in court. Um, and so uh, that, that, that was the city manager in my discussion and I thought that, that seemed like a, a fair plan um, and, and allows all parties involved their opportunity and their say. If it did proceed to to court, who would represent the city? I don't believe, uh, I haven't researched that particular question. I don't, but having said that, I don't believe that this would fall under the Michigan Municipal League uh, property and liability pool. Um, I would have to double check that. Uh, this one may fall under us needing to secure private, uh, you know, our own attorney to represent us. But I will double check that question tomorrow, and I will email that out to council. I just don't know the exact answer tonight. So if the MML doesn't represent it, represent the city, then we're going to have to hire an attorney. And, and, and the thought behind that potential court case is, is one that um, hopefully would not involve any protracted litigation. The sole question, I think, would be whether or not a judge would enter some sort of uh, preliminary injunction or temporary restraining order, finding that uh, Reef Riley would have standing to be able to participate or be required to participate in any amendment to that development agreement. That's sort of the, the, the take I had on it. And I had a discussion with a general counsel for Reef Riley uh, regarding that today. I, I don't know what you know, their plans would be under those circumstances or whether or not they'd even pursue that. So therefore, we may not even go to court. All we're trying to do is get a, an answer whether they have a third party claim here. And if they do, well then that changes everything. But I, again, I think it's a two-step process. If, that, if the motion, the council did not pass the motion, it's a moot point because then we're right. not even going to ask yeah, them in the development agreement. If it did pass the motion to uh, establish that status, if you will, to uh, to uh, be a party to the amendment to the development agreement, um, our, our suggestion would be to Reed Riley that you should pursue that in court, um, and, and we certainly are going to honor whatever uh, court order would be um, presented to the city in that circumstance. Okay. So to answer your question, no, we don't know how the court would ultimately rule on that. We would have no way of knowing that until that motion is filed or that direction is taken by other parties. And, and, and they, again, they, they may choose not to pursue that. So. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. It's unknown. <coughs> That's fair to say. Yes. So even if, say, the court rules in favor of retrial, then Singh's attorney can come back and challenge that? Well, you, you know, and, and it may be a, a little bit premature just because I, I'm not sure if they would take that action or if they would take the action along the lines I'm suggesting. But um, conceptually, I would see it as a, um, a court case that would be filed that, that there would be three parties involved, um, uh, the same entities, uh, <coughs> Riley and, and the city, and the judge would make its ruling, and, you know, that's what... That's what we follow. <coughs> much like, much like the information on the impact upon the roads or um, employment opportunities, this information is given to you as council members to have a complete view of the issues in front of you um, and allow you to make the best decision from where you're sitting. So we felt it was important that you had all of this information available to you for your discussions. So I would, I would, at this point in time, if there are 
I'm not sure if there's additional information. We presented all the information mm -hmm. we've had to council. I think at this point, it's really up to a council discussion as to the direction that we're going to move into. And we'll try and assist with answering any questions we have for you tonight. Yeah, everyone's got the information. We all know what the issues are in front of us. I believe we do. If we don't, then if this would be good to help us right now to let us know that you believe there's some additional information that would be helpful for you to, to help guide you in which direction you want to move into. We know that Councilmember Whitliff uh, will not be here tonight, uh, as well as will be unavailable for next week. We, we, we know that. He informed us of that. Um, but we're also trying to be responsive of Mr. Singh's request to expedite this process forward quickly, too. I'd like to move it on and, uh, you know, like get it over with as quick as possible, one way or another, uh, for or against. Uh, what do you think? Put it on the uh, agenda for next week? You know, that's that's what what I, official? That's I got that for it's got to go. That's what I see. And uh, yeah, it's wishes of the council is whether you proceed or not Please. proceed. So that's not, nothing more than putting it on. And I can't think of any more information that I would need at this time myself. You've been more than open with what you have. So. Well, again, um, Mr. Singh is here this evening. Uh, if you have questions, uh, I know it's a work session, so I'll have to Mary Kenny to determine how she wants to do that. I wanted to make sure that uh, Ms. Warren was here this evening. If you had any specific questions about uh, the employment opportunities. That's what I'd like to hear from Ms. Uh, Mrs. And, Warren. And, and Representative yeah. Henry Riley are here mm -hmm. also this evening. So. Mm -hmm. I know this is all part of the, your first discussion because I, I really kind of see this as a two-prong issue. One, dealing with an agreement with um, saying, and the second, dealing with the peninsula itself and whether the council sees that zoning needing to be changed or which would happen to, if we wanted to. I completely agree with you, Mayor. I think that it really is a two-prong event. You have a request in front of that you have to deal with. Um, if, if through our conversations and discussions, and I put this in my memo to council, which is available to the public, if in our conversations and discussions um, we come to a, a belief or a conclusion or a concern that the current zoning is um, not approached still appropriate, isn't still a viable plan, whatever that may be, um, my recommendation to council would be is, is that we take a, a deliberate and thoughtful process to evaluate that entire peninsula area, which would include uh, city <coughs> council, uh, planning commission, staff, and, and, and honestly, the, the residents of the peninsula. Uh, I think we have approximately 30 plus uh, folks out there between uh, business, we have, we have um, Galoop, we have residents, we've got MS Creative, and I mean everything from basically Auto value, I think it's auto value. Uh, auto value on that corner heading towards the peninsula. Um, I think it's important for council to, to hear from those businesses which have invested funds into their property based upon that plan that was created. And then after all of those conversations and discussions, I think then we can look at how we move this plan forward. Does it stay currently as it is, or do we, do we move into a different direction? Um, I just think that we have spent, we spent multiple years coming up with this plan, mm -hmm. multiple years. We've spent hundreds of thousands of dollars uh, to, to invest in this plan through streetscaping, CSO projects, various other projects. I just think it needs a thoughtful, deliberate process. I agree. And isn't that what we're supposed to be doing on tonight's agenda? Is uh, I, I did not think that that was what we were supposed to be doing on tonight's agenda. I thought tonight's agenda honestly was talking about which direction you want to move forward with the request made by Mr. Sen. Because it says discussion of the plan update. I, 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 I'm sorry. I, I could have been more clear about that. I honestly was focusing on um, uh, the request by Mr. Singh where I was focusing on. I guess I'd like to hear from Mrs. Moran on alternatives. <coughs> Seeing that she's here tonight. Good evening. Um, yeah, I can give you an update on some of the projects we've talked about that would be um, impacted in, in some way or another on the peninsula. Um, 
just as an update. Um, one of them is uh, Potlatch with, with the logs. I was contacted by Potlatch to uh, review other potential sites. Um, he has previously been working with Mr. Singh and is still in conversation with Mr. Singh as a potential option. Um, we have reviewed three other sites. Um, I was simply facilitating the meetings at the local level, um, which we did, and then I know he's still um, been in contact with Mr. Singh, and that's really um, business decision on which site he chooses. There was some pros and cons to each of the, the locations that we had visited. Um, the second is um, uh, that had been discussed previously was VB Steel, which, um, as you call, recall, was Steve Blank and um, Ravi Balbahani, I believe is my name's pronounced. Um, the status of that, um, as you know, we've been, uh, AES has been assisting that prospective developer since July of 2012. Um, we've engaged various local resources, state resources, um, MEDC, DEQ, locally, um, even in contact with uh, the ISD regarding placing children in school and uh, relocation resources. Um, at this time, we um, need the prospective developer to apply for an air quality permit through DEQ. We've been discussing it for months. Um, that has not happened yet. And um, in, more, in order to move forward with MEDC for any incentives to the state, um, there's a, a staffing and investment chart, it's called, which really just outlays very clearly and bluntly um, this is the amount of investment, these are the amount of jobs, and that's what they base any incentives upon. Um, and then also reviewing the financial capacity and background of not only the individual but the corporation and then the investors within that. Um, at this time, we have also not been able to secure that information. So we have invested a significant amount of time and energy in this, and so we are at a bit of a standstill until we are able to receive that information from that developer. Um, and he makes the or makes the application to the DEQ for that permit. Uh, I do know Mr. Blank um, has gone to Arizona for a few weeks, at least a few weeks. Um, he usually goes there for the winter time, and he'd been holding off, and um, he chose to to go where it was a bit warmer um, because he was also in a holding pattern with a potential developer. So that um, that is, is where that one stands. Um, the, and then there has been a third project that um, I've been in contact with Mr. Singh. I have not been in contact with that prospective project recently, but I do believe that those conversations are still being had. Um, then more recently, a new, a new, another new project has um, come up, and a team has been assembled to work on supporting a potential RFP. And um, a team was assembled of city officials, including the city manager, DPW, planning and zoning, um, Brownfield consultant, myself, and then actually council member Gustad in his capacity with Consumers Energy, not a city council. Um, so that's um, relatively exciting. That actually came to the state. Sometimes these things can be a long shot, but at the same time, the more information we receive, um, the more and more <coughs> feeling pretty positive. It's something we can pursue, and if not in this particular capacity that they're requesting, um, having this information assembled to shop it around, so to speak, with um, with other similar types of projects. So, so that's been fairly encouraging as well. So, uh, and that is all I have. Unless you have any other particular questions. It's one quick question. Uh, so there is alternatives for a deep water port. There are different sites, Ooh. but in different capacities. Um, for example, uh, we have visited Tondu, um, Jim Tondu, the drop forge site next to his property. Mm -hmm. They own, um, but he was, had indicated that a dock and some infrastructure would need to be built at that site for it to be um, accessible. We had also visited Mr. John White's property, and John is here. Um, and John has some plans to develop some infrastructure on his property, um, but at this time, it's it's not ready to go today or tomorrow, so to speak. But I, I believe, um, with his efforts, you know, I, I, I've offered to help secure, you know, that he needs assistance with permits or anything like that. Um, I feel that he, he could be good good to go, so to speak, in several months or a few months. Um, and then we'd also visited Reith Riley, and Reith Riley does have the current. Um, 
facilities. So um, again, and then after um, uh, Terry from Potledge and I departed, I know he went to visit Mr. Singh, and again, I, it's, it's really um, Potledge's decision on what they're going to choose to do. So we were just facilitating the, the meetings. But they know the different uh, areas they could, they could yeah. And, and for them, it's, it, again, it's the business decision on the sure. timing and, sure. and their, their interest in, in time frames and, and what they want to do for their company. Okay. Thank you. But within the city of Manistee, you know, part of our strategic goals is to have several options as a deep water port, you know, um, and that being a selling port for the city of Manistee. However, even though we have some sites like north of the bridge, there are some issues with actually being deep water. Is that correct? But there are different um, various locations around the lake, but water depth is important as well as the um, the infrastructure as far as having um, like the rocks. Obviously, if you've got rocks, you can't put a boat. <laughs> you have to have different conveyor systems and that type of thing. So it depends. And um, I'm by no means the expert in shipping. We have a couple of people in here that are. But the different types of equipment you would need to load and offload materials, depending on the material, mm -hmm. how close you can be to shore, uh, <clears throat> excuse me, and also the materials that you're bringing in, the boat, I mean, you could you know, not need that much depth. It just depends on the weight of the boat and everything else. So, I mean, there's various factors, but, um, but you're correct in my you know, understanding that there's some areas that just aren't going to be deep enough to accommodate that. And how many would you say in the city of Manistee that are currently that's viable that's without additional dredging or whatever it would? Um, okay, I would have to say, please correct me if I'm wrong. I, sites that have the capacity tomorrow to pull, well, not tomorrow, because mm -hmm. if it were open water. <laughs> um, Ed Sings mm -hmm. on the peninsula, um, John White, depending again on what type of loading, offloading, um, potentially century boat, depending on. Water. I mean, well, I, if there's water, but I mean, depending on what type of loading, offloading. Um, North Riley. Sorry? North Riley. And Reith Riley, and I believe that's all. Okay. And then being from the economic development, you know, we're all interested in jobs and sure. the zoning out there. I guess we have, you know, are we missing opportunities? You know, what we're trying to decide, is that probably, you know, it's zoned out there? Are we making the best use of it? You know, we tried 10 years ago, when I first got in council, that's when we changed, you know, went for the cool cities blueprint over there and really nothing's, a whole lot's been done towards that plan and yet now we have, it seems like, opportunities that do not fit within that plan. And are we missing, are there other opportunities that we missed out on because of the zoning, or from your perspective? Right, I, I can't speak to previous to me being here, because um, mm -hmm. I don't know. Um, as I mentioned, the last project I mentioned on here um, is a new project we've been working on. I think, um, I think that, this one is a bit more in the spirit of what the pencil plan was meant to be and could be the catalyst for that to move forward. Um, and it, it is, it's difficult, I mean, to not have the crystal ball because I, I can absolutely see the perspective of opening that back as a deep water port and having more of an industrial commercial easily enough, but then there's also the, well, what if, because then there's also the other hand of, what if we're able to do this, this, and this, and that could be a catalyst as well. So it, it's very difficult for me to say, well, what are the missed opportunities because we're still exploring what those opportunities could be. Um, the difficult thing with, with these types of projects and so many others is, you know, we can put every, you know, all hands on deck in the state and local and regional and maybe federal and, and all gung-ho on pulling resources together, but if, that last person that signs the check or doesn't flip the switch and walks away, well, then that's a missed opportunity. So we can pull all these things together, and if it doesn't happen, then it's like, well, that, that didn't happen, so should we look at something else? So um, I do agree with exploring the option, whichever way it goes, just making sure it's a thoughtful process, long-term, look at the big picture. Is this what's going to be best for us? Look at all the implications 
let's go this route. And recognizing that if we do go this way, then you know what, next month there might be something that comes up over here that we say, you know what, we, we lost that one because we're going this way, but you, we, don't, we don't know because maybe if you go this way, you'll get three or four other things, three or four other things show up. So it's unfortunate, I hate to say it's a risk. Um, I mean, we don't, we don't have people beating down the door <laughs> either way. I mean, we, we have opportunities come, we have opportunities go, and sometimes, quite honestly, it's a craft shoot. Um, it's, sometimes it's, a, it's an all or nothing, and sometimes you're waiting for something, and then other times we have multiple things all at once that we have to contend with and sort through. So. But based on your current knowledge and the current inquiries, is what is zoned out there now prohibiting future possible development? Or if we opened up, in some respect, that zoning out there, do you foresee that there might be more opportunities for growth? That's a difficult one. I think as far as you know, industrial growth, that's a pretty obvious mm -hmm. one. Um, as far as the peninsula plan, as far as um, the housing <coughs> and, and that type of vision, I think, honestly, this seems to be a difficult you know, looking at the, the condo inventory, looking at some of the residential housing, look at you know some of those types of things. I think it would be difficult to sell a three or four hundred thousand dollar condo <laughs> out of the peninsula. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's, it's a reality. We have other housing projects. I mean, that can be pointed to on Manistee Lake that those are vacant and and other um, housing <coughs> in the city. So I think um, I think it just. I guess it's very hard for me to make a definite decision on that without being able to explore further. Um, it's, yeah, I hate to be so indecisive on that. Has AES ever approached any um, senior retirement communities? Um, not that I am currently aware of. We are in, um, embarking with the um, North, sorry, Northwest Council of Governments region um, and housing inventory target market analysis. Mm -hmm. So um, there's been a local group that's been assembled, ranging from um, low income. Uh, for example, Clinton from the Housing Commission is engaged in that group, and um, maybe many social service agencies, AES Foundation, HSCB, Tribe, um, to assemble and look at housing of all types. So I believe um, Sarah. Uh, Sarah Howard would be engaged. No, what she? I'm thinking is more the um, uh, there's three different ones up in the uh, I'm trying to remember up in the Tri City area. Okay. Um, that are very nice, mm -hmm. and it would have been very nice if we'd had something here so we could have moved our mother-in-law closer, right. my mother-in-law closer. Right. But um, you know that's a personal interest to me. Sure. But I'm also looking at it. As Glenn and I age, if we don't want to leave the community, the last thing we want to do is maintain a house. Sure. And I don't want to buy. And after a certain age, you don't want to buy. Right. But renting in a nice, you know, senior apartment with, you know, meals provided if you want, that type of thing. Like an independence village or a yeah. independence house. I think... Um, I believe that, that I mean, senior housing, and again, the housing across all the continuum will be addressed in this housing work group, um, not just low to moderate income housing, which is, of course is a very important segment, but also um, we share you with economic development. If you're recruiting a physician to the community or recruiting a right. um, young family as teachers to the high school, I mean, what, what is the continuum of housing in senior housing is on that mm -hmm. as well. So. Um, but that will be a little off. That, that might, will be addressed. That might be something where the condos were, because I'm not. A, I just the condo market died, <laughs> obviously. But um, it's just one of the many things that I looked at for possibly changing out there, but. That's all the questions I had. Is there any other questions? Mm -hmm. Okay, thank you. Okay, Kenny, I can see where you were, the, where I could have been much more clear on this agenda mm -hmm. item tonight. How it should have read is discussion on the request by Mr. Ed Sang to amend the Peninsula Development Agreement. 
that, that would have been much more clear on the, uh, the work session agenda statement. That was the direction I was moving into, so my apologies for that. But it sounds like um, council feels like they have enough information that we would like to proceed on the next council meeting, which I think you're recommending that yes. instead of not doing a straw, that we just go ahead and put that on the agenda, unless. I have no problem. Do you feel like you have enough information? Yeah. Uh, here's, here's kind of the motion that um, City Attorney Taylor and I were working on. Motion to direct the City Manager and City, Man City Attorney to negotiate terms of an amendment to the development agreement subject to the final approval by Council. So even though next week, let's say, you take a motion to um, uh, direct staff to, to work towards that, it still would have to come back to you in a final form. Uh, the, the agreement itself. He would be directing us to negotiate some terms and agreements, but the terms and agreements and the actual amended development agreement would also require council approval. Make sense? Yep. Okay. Just want to make sure we're clear on that. And so that, does that language seem reasonable to everyone? I concur. Mm -hmm. yeah. I'm not sure about council. No, I'm just processing. Why would we uh, instruct uh, staff to uh, develop an agreement when we haven't determined whether we're going to amend the agreement or not. I think the, the, the our point of having that on the agenda for next Tuesday, which would be the 18th, thank you, um, would be for you to set direction for staff to follow and to put this question about it. Yep. Um, if, if by chance it doesn't get a motion in a second and it dies for lack of motion, you've made your decision. If it gets a second motion in a second, there's discussion, and there's a vote. And if it's voted down to not amend the development agreement, then we've got direction. If you vote in favor of amending the development agreement, then this issue has been addressed. So the goal for us, from my perspective, is, is this is a work session. You can't take final action on a work session. We've had a lot of conversation about this, a lot of discussion. I don't want the discussion simply to end of the work session and have someone come back and say, well, they didn't even vote on it. This was just a work session discussion. I would like to get a final council to, to formally take action one way or the other. And you've got all the information you said you need to make that decision. Uh, but I would like to see council take formal action one way or the other to provide that direction. Does that make sense? Sure. And then as far as the second, as the Peninsula Plan, looking at that, um, I got a letter from Councilmember Whitliff that he is really in favor of re looking at that and rezoning that to help bring more jobs. I think, you know, based on letters that I've received, like from the Manistee Manufacturing Council in support of re looking at that um, and other, I would like to have a work session on bringing those or another meeting bringing all those parties that you described together to discuss that. Okay. I think my concern uh, is it, I'm open to discussion. I, I don't I don't want to feel that we're being pushed into a corner to make a decision quickly on what has a significant amount of impact on a significant amount of people and that was decided for over a, a long period of time with a lot of time and effort uh, from a lot of people. And um, I, I, again, I'm okay with it, looking at it again, but I don't want to say, you know, on, two, on the 18th, yes, and then we're rezoning. That's, that doesn't make sense to me. So, um, so I, I think there needs to be a long, healthy discussion and a respectful discussion with all the parties involved that makes that a viable option uh, even if it is an option. Yeah, and I think with a small enough group, honestly, and it really is a pretty compact group of property owners, that I think it's a small enough group of property owners. And again, Denise, you, you looked it up. Do you remember the number of property owners? Uh, give or take 30 plus, yeah. something of that nature. I think that's a small enough group that you, you really have the opportunity to engage them all. Correct. Um, whether it be a residential property owner or uh, Mark Sandstead and MS Creative who purchased the um, um, Steggy. WT Steggy building, thank you very much, Councilmember Hargo, and invested to the auto value, to, uh, to Mr. Sang, to, to Mr. Sang, to Mr. Sang, 
to both of those, uh, Jeff and Ed both. I Boy, think we have an opportunity. Yeah, sure. You right. know, there's there are so many different people that are stakeholders there, and they they definitely need to be heard also I think it's a as to what they feel. That you can engage them all, honestly. Mm -hmm. um, and the way you described it was was my perspective. Mm -hmm. So we will have that on the next council agenda, as as um, as we read it to you. Um, anything else? For so you'll have these stakeholders here. The next meeting. No. 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 Okay. no. The next meeting is will be a council agenda item, as we just read. Okay. To for council to provide direction to take formal action on this request by Mr. Sen. Okay. He's asked for formal request. That's what we're asking you to do. And again, granted, knowing that that Councilmember Whitliff is it will not be available next mm -hmm. week. We just know that. Mm -hmm. Okay. Thank you very much for your help on that. The second uh, item tonight, I'll ask Mr. Bradford to come up, um, <laughs> is the second item tonight is, is that last week um, uh, Mr. Bradford and uh, Mrs. Wright uh, made a presentation to the council. Do you want to Um, made a presentation to the council regarding the finance clerk treasurer. Go ahead. Okay. Um, the finance clerk treasurer white paper uh, that was presented to council. We provided hard copies of council uh, last week to you. Um, wanted to give you an opportunity to read those hard copies. There's a lot of information to go through, um, and we wanted to provide an opportunity tonight. Not that tonight has to be the end point of these discussions, but provide ample time for council to ask questions tonight. Um, the goal is to get council input, which will help staff prepare the draft budget of the 14-15 fiscal year budget. Uh, the date for us to deliver the 14-15 fiscal year budget is uh, the mid part of March sometime, when we'll be delivering it to council. So. I would think we're right on track for uh, receiving your input on this particular white paper. I just had one one question, actually. Uh, no, I take it back to it. But Michelle's not here, so I won't ask the second one. What would you see as the biggest hurdle to overcome if you combined um, and created an administrative services department? Um, I, I think it would be a largely positive move. I think in the short term you would have some adjustment with, with um, moving some of the duties around in the office with different individuals and getting them up to speed and doing that training, but um, that shouldn't take a real long time. What it does provide, though, is it provides us flexibility and, and resiliency um, and, and I think a better level of service to the departments internally. Would you have to change the physical structure of the office down there? No, we have a, we have a desk that's vacant right now. Okay. What about the cost savings? Have you got any idea if there's any savings? Uh, uh, um, there, there really, there really would be minimal savings. I mean, we probably would be able to save a little bit on, on some of the supplies and stuff, but that's just a very small part of the budget. The real, the real benefits are, um, I think, in efficiency and getting things done and um, alignment of skills and, and uh, with responsibilities and duties. One of, the, one of the major changes here, if you recall back, if everyone gets back a bit to the, the community development white paper, just, just briefly, if you think back to there, um, one of the items in the community development white paper is if Mr. Rose was through his succession plan, if Mr. Rose was to retire, which he did in the end of July of 2013, then there was a proposed to be a position, a clerical position hired which would be at that point in time still a split, split position mm -hmm. between the uh, finance office. I, I don't, I'm not distinguished between finance clerks and treasurer. I'm just saying the whole finance clerk office down there as well as the um, community development office. I think at the time when we were drafting that particular uh, paper, the thought probably primarily was, at least in my mind, is, is that, that that body would be split between the departments, but spending a certain amount of time upstairs in the in the um, uh, community development office. If 
you read that white paper, I think that would have been a, a natural uh, takeaway that you would have taken from that. Um, the, the conversation now under the Administrative Service Department changes that. It really doesn't change the allocation of, of the individual, but it does change the physical location more of that individual. There still will be a significant allocation of that individual helping out with um, taking the Planning Commission minutes, taking minutes and notes, and then talking with Ms. Blakesley. Those are some of the biggest areas that, that needs help with. Whenever, if you've ever been in a position where you're running a meeting and you're trying to take notes at the same time, it's exceedingly difficult to participate in the meeting and, and take notes at the same time. So she's identified that as one of her largest needs is the, the help in uh, BRA minutes and uh, Planning Commission minutes, ZBA minutes, and Historic District Commission minutes. And this position, when you read it, would be filling in and assisting under those areas. It would also be able to assist on uh, larger projects at the uh, planning and zoning or building inspection, whether that be um, um, notification of, of uh, notification for 300-foot uh, ZBA districts or various projects like that. So it's still being split uh, among there, and we really haven't, I think, would take time to figure out what's that exact split. But there is a slight shift there, I think, uh, from perception, at least there was for my belief. Well, is, is that where then it would merge into the clerk and financial services departments? Or are they two separate entities? Is that two separate organizations? I think it'd be one. Are you referring to one of the other alternatives that was presented? Or are you referring to the administrative? Administrative and then merge. Right. The, the, all the merge does is really combine the budgets. And, and it's basically a status quo with combined budgets. That position is still in the budget, would still get hired, but it would probably be treated a little bit differently. It wouldn't necessarily allow for the job advancement and job um, uh, uh, growth in our department. It would, it would fill a little bit different role if it was reorganized in that fashion. Mm -hmm. I, I've, held I, off, oh, I've held off on hiring that position because I really wanted to have some time and working with the community development office, working with Denise, um, getting a feeling for what is the workload currently going on uh, between herself and uh, the other two individuals, the uh, building inspector and um, uh, the facility manager. So that was the reason for holding off on filling that position, as well as, honestly, I knew there was going to be discussion how this fit in with the, with the finance clerk white paper. So that was another reason for holding off until we were able to work through all those issues. When would you hire this uh, position, if this is okay? Well, what, what, wait, can I answer something? Um, it's already in the budget, so they can already hire it. I don't think it's our position to, that's why we have Mitch and department heads, is to officially run their departments and do so with that individual. That, that's micromanaging if we say, well, well, should we approve this or not? I believe that's their position to make things efficient. But it's in the, but it's in the way. I, I, I know that. It's but it's just basically for our information. But that's the way they want to form and formulate. And it's, it's a polite way of saying this is what we want to do. And don't be surprised if we move things around. Am I not right on this? Um, I'm not sure I'd be so bold to make that statement. <laughs> why? Well, it's already a hundred and then why, why should we be managing? Um, well, I guess it, for me, if you could. Sure. I read through this, I read, and I'm not sure, read, I'm not real clear as to what you're proposing and why. Okay. You know, as far as the setup and the reorganization within the clerk and treasury finance department. Because you got, you know, you have your status quo. Mm -hmm. Then we've talked about this administrative service department. Service department. Mm -hmm. And then this merge, which looks just like almost status quo. Status quo. So I guess I'm a little confused or not quite clear as to what you're recommending, why, and what are the differences. The the recommendation from the staff. Well, it really was the administrative service department. That was the recommendation mm -hmm. uh, to staff. Um, that would be this. Uh, I, 34. Yeah, I said 34. <laughs> 34. 
specific. Well, I'm looking at the. Where it starts about the administrative service department is 34, and 38 is the page where you see the. So this is the setup that you're. That's the goal. That they yes. like. To that do. you like to go towards. I know that's the one that I prefer. If for no other reason, it allows for some job growth and advancement, which is very important to keeping create you know keep employees. Well, my, question, my question to that, and it's tailed on to that, is, I, I you know, I, your recommendations are, in the, all the white papers, I like that because it gives us a good a, assessment of what current conditions are, what they could be look like, and and, and sometimes at, in the ivory tower, we we don't necessarily get everybody involved, and in, and what looks good on paper from a structural standpoint, and even from a budgetary standpoint, may not necessarily. Um, uh, uh, take hold at, at when you get down to uh, the employees and to what extent were they involved in that discussion and and um, are there going to be some displacements or job duty uh, uh, adjustments that are going to create some some obstacles or hurdles for those folks? Oh, yeah, it, it's unfortunate that Michelle couldn't be here tonight, but I do have uh, both Mary and, and Heather are here. And they were involved uh, at a fairly high level. Um, I would venture to guess more or as much as any of the other white papers um, in kind of putting this together and, make, and we made sure that we had buy-in. Um, there are some duties that are shifted around. You know, some of that's still a little bit in flux as to what that might be. We'd have to work that out internally. Um, but, but I guess to get back to the mayor's question, I, there's not really job displacement. What there is is there's job growth. And this also sets us up, if you read through the succession planning part and looked at those mm -hmm. years, um, Michelle's going to be retiring within you know, five to six, four to seven, four to six years, somewhere in that. And we need right. to be in a position to seamlessly manage that. The administrative services restructuring allows us to do that, assuming all of the people stay in place. Um, but, but just that aside, because that's out in the future, immediately what this does is it gives us some more flexibility and resiliency to not only provide services to other departments such as community development or fill in where needed, but allows us to be a little bit more efficient down there because we don't have people displaced when somebody's on vacation and, and having to cover areas that they normally don't cover and maybe aren't the best use of time to do that. Mm -hmm. So I think it, it, it's the only ability I see within this department to allow any job growth whatsoever. Um, so I think that's a positive. I think <coughs> providing additional flexibility is a positive. I think it still provides the services to the community development department that were um, anticipated and, and envisioned when John and their paper were put together um, and needed. And so I think I think it really is a win-win situation. I mean, it, it uh, it's it's doing everything that we, we need it to do. Well, in the new proposed setup, you're adding three two additional positions reporting to Michelle's current position. A direct. I guess I'm comparing 32 to 38. I mean, the way it works right now, and, and it's because of the fact that the, the clerk is really uh, uh, reports to council and to myself. Um, Michelle reports to me, and Heather reports actually kind of through Michelle to me, but, but more to me, and, and Mary also reports to, to Michelle, but um, I do all their evaluations. So it's it's kind of, it's really not a change um, in what we're doing, it's kind of just a change in the way it looks. And the reason is that is in this scenario, Michelle would be more handling the day-to-day -day sort of, um, you know, scheduling and things like that to make sure things are covered, which we do collaboratively right now. It's really a misnomer to say we've got a clerk department with its own little silo and the finance department with its own little silo. We work, we work cross-functional all the time. I mean, we were all in the same office, we work together. It's just the way it's been drawn up on paper for the last 12 years, and we've budgeted that way. Um, so I, if anything, it helps to rationalize a little bit the way the, the work chart is and, and how that looks. I guess I'm looking at it, see what makes sense. Do you take the names out of it, you know, the personal names? And that's how I'm looking at this. Because um, you are looking down the future and what makes sense. So if we're changing that reporting structure, um, looks like we're adding more responsibility to Michelle's position. But we're also taking away responsibility from Michelle's position because she won't be processing accounts payable anymore. That is, that's, that's a lot right of there on the page 37. Mm -hmm. that, that chart right, the page right in front of the one you're looking at, mm -hmm. that, that chart was to really kind of give you a, um, a snapshot as to 
well, how those how those responsibilities would would be moving within that department. But I'm looking at it more from not so much the day to day, but the reporting structure. And if you're adding people, is this are you looking at a, like an increase in that position? So if, if it was a grade say two, you're moving up grades. Is this are we then approving potentially increases in salary? Potentially, as we said in the paper, when when these positions get reorganized, we would rescore them. And there's the potential for some of that. And if not an increase, potentially somebody could move into a different um, uh, uh, wage category. Is that likely to happen? We would need to score. I'm not sure that it's likely. I don't think the, the scope <coughs> of the wages right now are, are significantly <coughs> different. When or if this is implemented and there's a succession plan, then I think some of that changes. But I think there, I mean, it all has to be looked at. Like we've done with all of our restructuring, restructurings, when people change their, their responsibilities, you, you look at that, you rescore it, and you see if it, you know, if it means anything. But it, it's not, it's not a large dollar item. But, but still, for me, I want that information before I make a decision. If you're asking me to make a decision to, we're going to end up, okay, we approve this, and then we look at the financial impact, rescoring it, and it changes dramatically. I think at the end of the, the, that section of the white paper. Um, it was mentioned uh, page 30, page 39. Yeah, I'll give you an example. Uh, when Chief Bachman took over the Public Safety Department, he got a 2% increase. It was a financial, yeah. Um, so what the paper says, the total combined wages of existing and budgeted staff for new administrative services are about 260000 By way of example, only a 2% increase due to the restructuring would equate to about $5,000. And said if they implemented the final impact would be determined during the budgeting process. So that gives you an idea of what that might look like. It could be more or less, but that was kind of the process that we were thinking about following. Is that including the new hire, the portion? No, because that's already in the budget. Okay. Sorry. The answer yes. This already in the I keep budget. forgetting that question. Yeah. Mm -hmm. and budget. Okay. Existing and budgeted staff, that includes Okay. Yeah, I think the biggest implication for me is a succession plan, you know. Mm -hmm. uh, these these people have worked for the city for a long time, and when Michelle retired, there's a possibility that one of these uh, uh, highly, skilled people. highly skilled people could move right into her job. And I think that is... It's very clear that, that if Deputy Clerk Mary Bachman is still with the organization, that that's something that she would be highly qualified sure, to do. Sure, sure. And, and we point that out in the paper. Yeah. But that's not relevant as to how it's structured. It's based on the qualifications of the person and looking at the job that they want or go into. Just because you restructure a department doesn't necessarily mean it automatically it makes someone qualified or disqualified. Oh, absolutely not. Absolutely correct. But I think absolutely. it helps. But I, I, and I think one of the areas that, that, that strikes me on the administrative service department, and I'm not exactly sure how to cut it up, to be honest with you, but just throwing it out is, is that um, uh, I think you should, when you see the future additions, potential future additions, I would kind of slide those to the side if, if I was comfortable. So the Mark Hansen, the facility manager, the city assessor, those are going to continue to report to me. And as it is the building inspector and community development, as, as my direct reports. The, the bigger issue here really is, is the Ramsdale Theater. Where, where is where is the right fit for the Ramsdale Theater? I think that's a big discussion. And I think it's one that we're working through right now with the Ramsdale Theater right. and working through that strategic planning process, which council is going to be involved in that strategic planning process. But I think that'll be a big question about where's the, where, where's, where's the right place for that individual to go. I think another aspect that a lot of time is being spent by Ed um, and Michelle is the 11 consultants. Um, that would be IT, IT right, or our <coughs> IT consultants. That would be our plumbing consultants, our HVAC consultants, um, um, electrical electricians. Um, I'm missing several of them, obviously, but you get the point of where we're at. Um, that seems like an awful lot of those consultants, and there may be a better way for us to, that may be the right direction for them to have them all continue to report to Ed. That may be the most logical, direct, uh, efficient way to work through, but I think we need to have some conversation internally among the staff. Wasn't well, there the something department. in the, um, oh, come on, Catherine. And 
the reality is a in lot our of benchmark. Yeah, I'm glad you brought that up because I was trying to find the page. It's yeah, okay. and it's like there's something in the benchmark. I love it that when you look at again, as extremely capable and can take on these and handle them very well, mm -hmm. but does it make sense? I mean, when you've got your finance director overseeing plumbing, electrical, right. mechanical, the that, that doesn't make sense to me. Right, right, and, and the reason those are there, and, and let's be clear on this as well, so that, that was anticipated in, in the community development yeah. way, so that's where they slid in the absence of having revisited what that recommendation was, but, but I, the two <laughs> buildings that need the most in electrical and HVAC, or have needed it, are the Ramsell Theater and City Hall. And to say that these contractors are reporting to me isn't isn't necessarily 100 percent because if Dave needs work done over at the fire station, he calls Custom Sheet Metal directly. So we're more doing contract administration, but an awful lot of what those vendors are doing is is has to do with those two buildings. If Topline is doing work for Jeff at the wastewater treatment plant, Jeff, that doesn't run through me. Jeff deals with that, so I'm not. So why wouldn't our city that. engineer be looking at this? I mean, these type of plumbing, electrical, mechanical, why wouldn't we not then structure that underneath our engineering? Well, I mean, we wouldn't pay the engineer to administer their contracts and make sure that they're paid. We do all the back office stuff. There just needs to be a primary point of contact. That's more or less what those are. I think are. that's what it is. It's more of a primary point of contact. And if that wanted to go somewhere else, then we could do that. I'm just, that's where it is right now. Basically. Some of them make perfect sense. In other words, Michelle is... Um, Michelle is a uh, is the Peg staff liaison. So Michelle is the staff liaison mm -hmm. for Peg. It makes perfect sense for that. So I just think we need to uh, the bond council, financial advisors, website design and host, several of those do make auditing, and those make perfect sense for where they're located. But I think some of the other ones, they just need some some direction and some attention and discussion as to is there a more efficient way for us to to allocate that and, and honestly keep the time that I've asked focusing on where we need to have them focus. <coughs> and I'm not saying that I just agree with the proposal of the administrative team, but yeah. you know, if we're truly going to there, and I have no issue with the current setup, but what is the financial impact? I mean, does that create additional? Um, so what you're saying is you'd like to see this close position scored and come back with a mm -hmm. more firm financial. And not to say that would be served, no, oh, no because they sure. went into a higher score, but having that information before you make a decision is something I would want. Um, as far as, you know, I agree, I don't know that the Ramsdale, that whole setup, is, if that's an appropriate place, definitely some of those contracting services. And, um, the Ram and the Ramsdale, the Ramsdale has been a, it's been a big obligation uh, mm -hmm. of the finance and clerk's office. Primarily, I would say, on Heather and Ed for the last two years. Three. Yeah, and, and that decision was made when, when, when the city took it back over from the city clerk's Because in order to operate the building, you've got to have... You have to have somebody who's responsible for it and take it and pay attention to it. And the Ramsall Governing Authority isn't a, isn't a management or an operations board. It doesn't do that. So I think the strategic planning process for the Ramsdale is important because I think it's going to hopefully lead to maybe a better governance model, which is, mm -hmm. is overdue. Wow. And, you know, there could be other alternatives that come out of that. And the council needs to be involved with that. Because when is that beginning? Um, they're working on getting the consultant there. Um, so they haven't, they haven't scheduled any time for that yet, but it's in the works. Um, so that's that's really important. I mean, um, would it be nice if the Ramsdale could, could run itself under Mike and have a different governance structure or something different? I think that's something that needs to be considered, but as it is right now, that's where it lives. Part of the reason is I'm, by ordinance, the representative on the Ramsdale Governing Board. Our office does all the back office stuff. There's really no other logical place to put it right now. It just doesn't make any sense to put it anywhere else. Should it be somewhere else long term? Maybe. But right now, there really aren't any options. Well, Mike Carey is the executive director. Shouldn't he be? Oh, he is. Mike is doing a great job. I, I mean, he works under you, though, right? Correct. Correct. But if he's the executive director, shouldn't he have more responsibilities, take some of the responsibilities he off? He's taken an enormous amount of responsibilities okay. off of me. So what I hear Mary Kidd saying 
is, is that you would like to see us provide some more financial impacts to the administrative service and bring that information back to council. I would like to see that. Yeah, that's fine. I mean, from my perspective, uh, the, the, I'm okay with getting that, but from the, the, to reiterate what I was saying earlier is it, for me it's uh, about employee engagement, employee involvement, and, and buy-in from that group of people because, again, I'd hate to see us make these structural changes and uh, adjust uh, workload and work structure um, without having uh, their buy-in and their, their commitment to that. I love the flexibility, and I'm sure they're going to love the, the opportunities to say, hey, I can take a day off without having to, you know, <coughs> part the seas and whatnot. So, um, and then I also love the fact that Denise gets help where she needs it and, and having some flexibility in those areas. Um, and for me, that that's well worth the two, three, or four percent. It may be uh, an adjustment there because keeping good people is critical for us to be successful and maintain the services we provide. And, and if this really helps them keep engaged and, and, and see a succession for their future, I'm all, I'm all for it. So. And, and the staff that are most impacted by this are here tonight, if you'd like to hear from them, if that's appropriate. But I mean, they were involved in that process and, and I think are fully on board with it. I, uh, the interesting thing really about that department, if you've been down here on any part of the day, they're open. I mean, they're, they're, they're open. They are, they are the front line, uh, open, accessible department to uh, the general public. Not that the manager's office is open and the other offices aren't open, but they're open during lunch. They, they schedule their lunch. They, they, they really schedule themselves to be available for the public. No, they do a great they job, and I know. Right, no, no, I'm just saying that, that makes them a little bit different from other departments. That's why the flexibility is going to be so crucial for them. And their customer forward. service skills are just unbelievable. They're, they're Very difficult to replace, too. It gives us lots of lots of room to grow, too, within the. Department. That's what I like about the administrative so service what, plan. I'm, 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 we're, we're happy to um, score some of those positions, work with those individuals. Sure. It, it, now, I will say it's going to be a couple weeks. Um, there's some vacation time and some some uh, sick leave time that's being taken right now. So it's going to be a couple weeks before we're able to get that information back to you. Uh, but we'll do that at the very earliest opportunity. Uh, we'll get started on that right away. And, I think uh, they would want to know <laughs> as well. Yeah. As soon as possible, yeah. 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 And again, Heather and Mary are here if you have any specific questions. Of them. They don't get on camera very right No, I have one for <laughs> Heather, but it will wait until after. I have another question about that structure, <laughs> uh, at, and, and maybe you can help out with this. <laughs> But um, the logical succession then um, in that area, um, would Heather have an opportunity, or we could just say the deputy treasurer and payroll have an opportunity to also get cross-trained um, if, let's say, for instance, uh, um, our deputy clerk didn't want to necessarily ascend to uh, the city clerk, uh, um, would uh, there also be enough training and opportunity for the deputy treasurer to move in that role as well with that cross training. I, I'm glad you asked that question. Um, we were planning on sending Heather to the Clerks Academy starting this year. Because oh, yeah. so I to, again increase that flexibility. Didn't want to necessarily see yeah, people that, have that have position's got to go laterally then up. I, I would obviously see a, a nice succession for either or if they were both successful yeah, uh, in acquiring the skills. She has one year in the Treasury. She has one year in the Treasury. Yeah. All right. So we'll, we'll work on that. And, Present that back to City Council. Thank you. Thank you. Any other questions that we didn't answer about that? I think that I think this is a great conversation and a great discussion. Um, I, I think that uh, I think Michelle and Ed did a great job on the paper with their, uh, Heather and Mary's input. Um, a lot of it was done before I even saw it. We just had a lot of talented staff members. It was nice to be able to work with them.